Yeah, normally Gary and I uh, use walkie-talkies while we're out in the hills because, you know, <laughs> I tend to get lost easier, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's good to be able to communicate with each other. So we didn't use them today, I don't know why. And I went around the corner of this mine. I figured Gary was over here and I kept calling out for him and I couldn't find him. And the magic candy kicked in. And I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> where is Gary? And I can't find him. So the plan was to be able to take everything off, you know, <laughs> get some color on my skin. Cause I like to do that in the desert. You know, those of you who've been following our little adventures know from, my gosh, I think I've been exploring canyons and not wearing anything. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, since what, 2007? So we've reached the tailings in that mine I was talking about. It's gotten significantly colder and the wind is blowing pretty strongly. So day is definitely changing. I found this pile of rocks down below. Almost looked like a graveyard the way it was laid out first. So <laughs> probably just a big giant fire pit of some kind, but very old. There hasn't been anybody here for probably decades at least because the, the old trail coming in here was absolutely flat. No signs of tracks whatsoever for a very long time. So it's turning around. We might find something really interesting. In a minute, I'm gonna go up to those mines. We'll see what's up there. Remember earlier I said that the first time we came through here we saw wild horses. Down at my feet right now are a set of wild horse prints in the dirt heading off into the distance. There's more than one of them and it looks to be a little one with them as well. So they definitely like this area. So wild horses are here. All right, so I'm approaching this old mine up here is not a lot of tailings, so I think these are going to be a short prospect. But we're going to find out together. There's definitely a hole in the ground here, so here we go. So it looks like they went in about 20 feet or so and they gave up because there's a big wall. That's a small hole. It's definitely a crawling hole. So it's another hole above me. Let's go check that out. This hole is a lot longer. Can't tell how far back it goes in. I'm not gonna go a long ways. But uh, these walls are pretty sketchy. So I don't wanna take any chances here, but they were, they were serious. They were on the prowl, they were on the hunt, those prospectors, those greasy hand prospectors. They wanted some of that mineral. They wanted some of that ore. And so they were going for it. 
Man, hard rock mining, that's a tough life right there. Every time I hear contemporary folks bellyache about this or that or whatever, I say, man, we're living like kings. I don't care what your social status is these days. We're living like kings, trust me. These people, they worked. This is work. So, all right, I'll go a tiny bit more. We'll see what's up there. Yeah, normally Gary and I uh, use walkie talkies while we're out in the hills because, you know, <laughs> I tend to get lost easier, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's good to be able to communicate with each other. So we didn't use them today, I don't know why. And I went around the corner of this mine. I figured Gary was over here and I kept calling out for him and I couldn't find him. And the magic candy kicked in. And I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> where is Gary? and I can't find him. But I think I found him. I think he's in that hole up there. I'm in the hole! Oh, there he is. <sighs> Thank goodness. I was getting a little worried. I'll be out in just a second. So, uh, so I just walked down a ways in this thing and it goes a long ways and uh, gets narrower and narrower. These walls aren't supported in any way and they're really, really crumbly. So decided not to go too much further. I'm gonna head back and check the perimeter again, but it looks like this one just didn't play out for these fellas. And uh, that's pretty common. It happens out here, so onward. I forgot to give Tabitha her walkie-talkie. And so she was running around, panicked. She needs her walkie-talkie. It's important. We need our security blankets. It's important. So I'm gonna go give Tabitha her walkie-talkie. It's important. <laughs> So earlier, I found a pile of poop to share with you guys to say, hey, look, the wild horses were here. And then I saw this other pile and I told Gary, he's like, I'm gonna film that. And I'm like, man, don't steal my poop thunder. I already found it. Poop thunder stealer. Well, I don't wanna steal your poop. You can stand next to me. Okay. I don't wanna steal he's your let me stand poop next thunder. To <laughs> Not a poop thunder stealer, but earlier I had already mentioned and sh got some shots of hmm. some uh, wild horse prints in the dirt over here, right. some some mm -hmm. tracks in the dirt. So yeah, but I didn't do we're that. both thinking alike. But this is magnificent because this proves that those were correct identification That's That's fresher. of horse, wild horse tracks. I'll touch you with my pole. Let's squish it and see how fresh okay. it really it's is. It's not that fresh. I mean, it's a little fresh. I mean, it's not, I don't know how, it doesn't smell. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dry. Yeah, just don't eat it. All right, so this is pretty dry. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> but they're here. They, it's not like that was from a year ago. That's recent, so yeah. watch out for those wild horses. Ooh, they have attitudes. Oh boy. <laughs> So Tabitha found this uh, pile of rocks, probably Cairns marking mining claims, but these guys were really serious. They were really out of control because there's not one, but there are four piles. Look at these guys. These guys were crazy serious, why? Oh, what do we have here? We have some old, what is that? Is that baby food? Yeah, baby. Like baby food? 
old bottle down in there. Sometimes they would put their written claims inside of things like bottles and tins and old tobacco tins and things and leave them in places like this. So I don't know. Maybe that's what that is. I don't know. I mean, these are, oh, look at that. Son of a gun. There's one in there. See it? See the, see the paper in there? That's a claim. Oh, it's rotten. If I try to get that out, it's probably going to just fall to pieces in my hand. But sure enough, look at that. There's one right in there. I'll be darned. I'm going to see if I can get it out without destroying it. But So I decided not to try to pull that paper out of that bottle because I would have just, I would have had to have broken the bottle to get it out of there. I'm not going to do that. So I just put it back. We're going to go around the corner. I think this is the end of this mining claim, but uh, we'll take a look around the corner. There's a couple more of these big rock cairns, and I don't know why these miners would put four of those guys. They're about three feet tall right next to each other. Like, what's the point of that? I don't know. I know every year to keep your claim, because this is public land, this is BLM, you have to do a certain amount of work on it. So maybe they're like, oh yeah, we'll go out this year and build another pile of rocks next to the other pile of rocks. And that'll be our work for the year. I don't know, who knows, oh, there's more. There's two here, there's two way up there. What the hell's going on here? Check this out. And then way up there, you're not gonna see it. I'm in super view mode on this GoPro. There's two more of these big guys. And I just walked up here. This is not staged. I just walked up here. Look at all these. I There's wonder. Down there too. I know. Did you see those other two? Yeah. And I wonder if there's a bottle here too. Oh, there is? I don't know. Oh. If so, I think it's pretty buried. So. Why were they building so many big piles right next to each other? I don't get it. Someone tell me why. Curiosity. Curiosity is driving Tabitha and I completely insane. So, all right, I'm gonna see if I can find a bottle here. Okay, here's another one. This looks to be alone. We finally found a solo rock cairn, and this is our landscape. Maybe he's lonely. Yeah, he's alone. So I just found a traditional wooden claim marker back there. And so now I have a theory they ran out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Tabitha laughed. They ran out of wood. They were lacking in wood. So they started making stone cairns, stone markers. Ooh. They need to go get some more wood. Yeah, get some wood. That's all I'm saying. Oh, there's another marker over here. It's kind of small. Is it wood, a small wood? I or don't is know. It wrong? Here, what the hell? Let's go look real quick. So. So apparently they were actually very selective with their use of their wood. Well, I mean, you've only got so much wood, right? Only so much wood. So. That's right. What do you feel about this? You don't want to ask me. Miss Tabitha. We don't want to, this is not that kind of show. Well, they were lacking in wood, apparently. Yes. Because it's mostly rock. They were rock solid. They were rock hard. Rock hard, I tell you, these miners. Yes. Rock hard. They rock hard and some of them just didn't use their wood. I think some of them just had wood problems. I think they had a lot of wood problems. Scarcity of good, dense wood, you know, good solid rock rock solid wood. Yep. Scarcity, you know, that's... I mean, you don't want to waste good wood though. You don't want to waste good wood. Oh wait, we go this way more. Okay, we have to make a decision here. Well, son of a gun, there's a wild horse behind me. 
<laughs> I love it. He's way back there. And I only have this GoPro with its wide lens with me. I don't have a long lens with me, so I'm not going to be able to punch in and show you. I might walk a little bit towards him, but he's probably, dear God, he's probably a thousand yards away. It's a long ways away. So at any rate, that's kind of cool. So this is their territory. And so we ran into one and that's pretty awesome. So I just gave Tabitha a radio to stay in communication. I'm walking towards this wild horse. It's really far out here. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna get it on camera, but let's do a radio check. Gary for Miss Stevens, over. Yes, I'm using the facilities. So Tabitha Stevens is using the facilities while on radio. All right, well listen, I don't want to interrupt you while you're taking a big massive dump. So uh, I'm just gonna keep walking. You are so wrong, and that is not cool. You know I only poop in the morning. And if it's in the day, that means it's brushing out. And today was a nice one, so no. It's a number uno. <laughs> I knew she was gonna come back with that. I'm going to tell them the story about the maze in Canyonlands and the, the pooper that we set up right next to that thousand foot cliff. Let's save that for a podcast. Nope, I'm going to do it now. We can always do it again. Oh boy. All right, I'm out. I will catch you later. Over and out. One never knows. One never knows. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. We were camped out at the maze, the maze district of Canyonlands. And there's only two camping spots, ultra primitive, probably the most primitive of the entire park service in the lower 48 states. There's only two spots, super hard to get to. And there's this cliff, we were there alone. So we're literally like, there was nobody even anywhere near us. And the campsite's on top of this thousand foot cliff. And we put the toilet, cause you gotta pack it in, pack it out. Right on the edge of this cliff is about 15 feet away from the edge. The most massive panorama, probably one of the most beautiful landscapes on the entire planet. The best place on the planet to take a good healthy dump. And Tabitha doesn't do well with dumping in the wilderness. So she couldn't do it. She sat there a few times and tried, but just couldn't make it work out. And I didn't understand that because I'm thinking, my God, if you're gonna take a dump, that place was the best. So that's my poop story uh, in uh, Canyonlands in the Maze District. And uh, there you go. So it got a little bit warmer, a little breeze, but I heated up, so now I'm able to walk around comfortably. Sorry, I keep looking on the ground. So Gary went to go uh, check out the wild horses. He got wild horses. So he ran over a couple hills, and I stayed behind to look for like pictographs, pictoglyphs, any kind of markings to show that maybe uh, there's activity going on up here. So far I haven't found anything yet. However, you never know. Maybe people just weren't in these spots. You know, in this spot in particular. I have found artifacts in places outside this, a little bit outside this area that I was in shock. I was like, where did this come from? So, you never know. Okay, this is wild. There are two wild horses. I'm probably about 200 yards away. And I just noticed one that was super camouflaged and it turned to face me. So they're both facing me. They are not running yet. So I'm gonna kind of sneak up here and see if they'll allow me to say hello and give them some good vibes. So we'll see. There's one there, there's one here and there's one over here. And I know you can't see this. 
because of this wide angle lens on this GoPro. I guess I should have brought a long lens, but I didn't, so I'm gonna have to do my best here. Okay, I just found the stallion. He's looking at me. He's about 70 yards away. He's beautiful. I'm gonna turn it around. He's over here. Wow. Check this out, folks. This is a beauty. Yate Osiosalaki. Osiosalaki. Hello there, my good friend. It's okay. Isn't this beautiful, folks? Wild horse. Wild horse. Oh, you're so gorgeous. Look at this. So there's a little one. So what I think this wild horse is doing is keeping himself between me and uh, mom and the baby back here. Baby is uh, nursing. <laughs> it's really amazing. So uh, I'm not going to encroach any further. This is just, you know, give them their space. It's all good. But I think it's really, really cool how dad's like, okay, you can hang here, but just don't cross this line. And that's basically what he's doing. So I'm going to respect that and uh, move on and go back to Tabitha. We thought the day was potentially going to be a dud and we found wild horses. Fantastic. Ooh. 